off and head on by. We're out on Bear Hollow Wildlife Management Area. I'm following a group of researchers and we're looking for green salamanders. This is a project that's occurring in multiple states, part of a grant that TWRA and other state agencies are a part of. They don't like that much water. Since they're plethodonids, everything goes through the skin. Too much water, they'll absorb too much water and it's not good for them. Plethodonid? Lungless. Mm. So they breathe through their skin. What I'm learning is uh, basically, these researchers are like mountain goats. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, you're on to me now, aren't you? Wait, maybe he will just come back over. All right. What makes this difficult is that this animal, the green salamander, is a three to five inch animal. We are on Bear Hollow Mountain, which is thousands of acres of land the habitat that we're looking in is rock outcroppings and these animals three to five inches long they look like their markings on their back look like lichen which is you see on all the rock around here they like to get in the crevices along these rock outcroppings so first you got to be able to see one second you got to be able to get them out of the crevice Yeah, finally jumped out. We're out here today to help with locating new locations, survey historic localities, make sure we have extant populations, find new locations, um, assist with some population demographic studies to get a better idea of you know, how abundant um, are some of these populations, how healthy are they, try to get some information about their life history, things like growth rates, how long are they living, how quickly do they reach reproductive maturity, how many offspring are they producing, things like that. Is that where you want it? You want it further back? Mm -hmm. Prior to the start of this uh, project, we had maybe six occurrences of green salamanders on Bear Hollow Wildlife Management Area. And it turns out that we don't know much about them because we haven't looked. But now that we're out looking quite a bit, we're pretty much finding them everywhere we go, with, with some exception. Um, Sometimes they're more dense, or some places they're more dense than others, and we're really trying to parse out why. So, so we're looking at the range-wide genetics, we're looking at the disease um, occurrence or the disease prevalence in them, but also we're looking at the occurrences across the area, and also one of the things I'm interested in is why the green salamanders select the rock crevices that they do. So we'll find a lot in some areas and not so many in others. So we're collecting characteristics of the rock crevices. So you may be asking yourself, what is the big deal about a green salamander? Kind of the proverbial canary in the coal mine. So many salamanders, just because they have to breathe through their skin, um, they can be you know, particularly sensitive to any sort of maybe chemical pollution in the water. So if there's you know, something that might be perturbating um, or bothering you know, the, their habitat, they might be one of the first kind of species that might respond negatively. So we could see you know, declines in this big population. So the fact that we find them in many areas suggests that the forests are relatively good quality and the overall ecosystem health is high. Well, any day out in the woods in, in Tennessee in the Cameroon Plateau, I think is a successful day. The fact that we, you know, we have caught four salamanders so far, hopefully we get a few more later this afternoon, uh, always a positive. So.